What are we making today? Farmer cheese. If you are new to the world of cheese making, farmer's cheese is the easiest cheese to make. It requires no special ingredients and it takes just a few minutes. I'm going to show you how. Welcome to the From Scratch Farmhouse. Come learn with us. Okay, all you're going to need to make farmer's cheese is a gallon of milk, a half a cup of white distilled vinegar, a tablespoon of salt, a colander, a bowl or pot to put your colander on top of, a flour sack towel, a pot to make your cheese in, and a wooden spoon. The first step is to pour the gallon of milk into your pot and heat it up over medium heat, stirring frequently. Ideally, you'd have farm fresh milk, but we don't currently have a cow of our own, so I'm using store-bought, which works just fine. I would suggest not using ultra-pasteurized milk, however, as it doesn't work well in cheese making. In my blog post on this, I said to stir continuously, but today I'm multitasking and I'm making this cheese as I homeschool my kiddos. I was back and forth to stir and it worked out just fine. Just definitely keep an eye on it so that it doesn't burn on the bottom. You are going to bring the milk up to about 200 degrees Fahrenheit. I like to use a thermometer, but it really isn't necessary. You just want to get it to the point where it looks like it's just about to boil, but not quite. When it gets to the right temperature, it's time to add the half a cup of vinegar. Pour it in slowly and keep stirring. This part is actually really fun to watch, and if you homeschool, can be a fun science project too. If you have little ones, you could tie in the nursery rhyme Little Miss Muffet with this activity, because the reaction you are seeing here is in fact the separation of the curds from the whey. You're going to stir for one minute, and then remove the pot from the heat where you will let it sit for 10 minutes. Here's the quick science of it, in case you're curious. Milk is a colloid, which means it's made up of different particles that blend together smoothly and won't separate on their own. However, by adding an acid, which is the vinegar, a chemical reaction occurs because the casein protein particles, which are the curds, can't mix with the vinegar, but the liquid whey can. Okay, that's your science lesson for the day. Let's move on. You are now going to line the colander with the flour sack towel. Give the pot one more quick stir, and then dump the curds and whey into the colander, being careful because the liquid is still going to be very hot. Just as a side note, the whey can be used for many things, so don't toss it. At the very least, you can give it to your chickens and they will thank you. You will then let the curds sit and drain for about 10 minutes. You can also help it along by stirring and pressing firmly with a wooden spoon to squeeze out more of the whey. Once you feel like you have most of the whey squeezed out, it's time to add one tablespoon of salt. I actually did slightly less here because I only had very finely ground salt on hand and one tablespoon just looked like too much, but I later regretted it, so go for the full tablespoon. This would also be the time to mix in any other flavorings you would like. This cheese doesn't have a super strong taste on its own and takes flavoring well, so go ahead and get creative. Also, make sure you stir really well because you definitely don't want to be chomping down into a chunk of salt. Okay, now gather up all sides of the towel and lift the towel full of curds, holding it over the pot. Twist the top of the towel to squeeze out any remaining whey. Careful, it might still be hot. You can then spend a few minutes twisting and squeezing until it doesn't feel like you can get any more liquid to come out. Okay, maybe I shouldn't admit this because this probably says something about my exercise habits, but this was a pretty good workout. If you find yourself running out of steam or you're just trying to multitask, this is a great project for kids. They enjoy doing it. It's simple. They can't break it. And it gets the job done while teaching them a valuable skill. Okay, now what you're going to do is wrap up the ball of curds in the entirety of the towel and massage and press the ball on a countertop, letting any remaining whey soak into the towel. I kind of move the towel around as I go until every bit of it is saturated. It sort of feels similar to kneading bread. Finally, you're going to unwrap the towel and transfer the cheese to a glass loaf pan or container with a lid. Press down firmly so that no air pockets remain. If you can't help yourself, sneak a bite of that warm cheese. You won't regret it. The more you compress it and get any air pockets out, the easier it will be to slice it later, so go ahead and use your fingers if you have to. Important tip that I want to mention here. Make sure you wash all of your equipment, including your towel, as soon as you can. As it hardens, it's near impossible to remove. Okay, that's it. Our cheese is done and it's ready to be refrigerated so that it will harden. Now, our family of nine can finish this off pretty quickly, but if your family can't finish it off in about 10 days, which is how long it's good in the refrigerator, you can actually cut this into smaller portion sizes, stick it in a vacuum sealed bag, and then stick it in the freezer. It thaws out amazingly and it will taste just as good.
Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button. And if you're not already subscribed, make sure you do so so you don't miss any upcoming videos. Save mommy channel. Bye.